Welcome back to Inside the Standard Library. This time, we're looking at the contains method of sequences, which returns true if an element of your choosing is found inside the sequence or false otherwise. Let's go over to Xcode. Like I said, the contains method on sequences looks over every item in the sequence to see if it contains something specific. For example, we could make an array of numbers like this, let numbers equals an array of one, two, three, four, five, we could then use contains to check whether it contains a number five, like this. Print numbers.contains five. Or make an array of strings like this. Let strings equals an array of apple, banana, pear. And check whether it contains grape. Print strings.contains grape. Now I know what you're thinking. This one's going to be easy, right? We're just making an extension on sequences, constraint to equatable, loop over the array, and check each item. Well, let's try and write it ourselves. We'd say extension sequence where element conforms to equatable. Funk contains two, takes an item of our element type, returns bool. Inside there, we go over every item in self. And if that element is equal to our item, we can return true. This thing does contain the item. After the loop, we'll return false. If we've gone over every element in the array and haven't found the item, it means it does not contain it. So returning false makes sense. We can now use that for our two method calls. We can say number.contains2, 5, and strings.contains2, grape. Both of which would work exactly as before. Okay, that's our solution done, and it was indeed as easy as you probably thought. Now let's take a look at the equivalent code in the Swift standard library. The contains method is inside sequencealgorithms.swift. So let's open that in Xcode and search for func contains to find it. Okay, here's the method. You can see it does two things. First, it tries to call underscore custom contains equatable element and return the value that comes back if possible. Otherwise, it calls contains again, this time passing in a closure. The underscore in underscore custom contains equatable element tells you this is an internal method. It's designed for use inside the standard library rather than being exposed to regular Swift development. Its job is to provide a short circuit for contains operations where they're known to be highly efficient. For example, dictionaries and sets can both see if they contain an item in linear time, which is extremely fast. They don't need to loop over every item, checking them by hand. So some special sequences have this method implemented so they can take the fast path through contains checking. In the case of arrays, which is what we're using in our example code, things get more interesting. The contains method appears to call itself, this time passing in a closure to execute. Does $0 equal the element we're looking for? This is actually a method overload. And if I search for func contains again, we can see its code. You can see the second contains method accepts a predicate which is a function that accepts an element and returns a boolean if it's found. It then loops over the sequence, calling the predicate on each item until one returns true. But if they all fail, then it returns false. Okay, so this has a bit of a twist. Swift actually has two contains methods, and the simpler one calls down to the more advanced one. It's much smarter than our implementation. Let's try it out in Xcode. You've seen how we can use contains on an array of strings to check whether it contains a specific string. Well, using the second form of contains, we can pass in a custom predicate, allowing us to write code like this. Print strings.contains $0 has prefix Q. That checks whether the array contains any fruits beginning with Q, which it doesn't. Or code like this. Print numbers.contains $0 is greater than 3. That checks whether the numbers array contains anything over 3, which it does. What matters is that the predicate you pass accepts a string and returns a boolean, which means we can even check any word in our array exists in a string, like this. Let device equals Apple Watch. Print strings.contains where device.contains. The device contains method is a method on strings and accepts a string and returns a boolean telling us if device contains a string we're looking for. Passing it into strings.contains will pass each of our fruits into device.contains to see whether it returns true and stop as soon as one is found. Okay, that wraps up our video. Although our version worked fine, it didn't really come close to the power and flexibility of the version inside the Swift standard library. 
Hopefully though, you learn some things along the way, not least that contains where is really powerful. And now it's over to you. What did you learn in this video and how would you apply it to your own code? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I make lots of videos like this one to help you build your skills as an iOS developer.